In this video I will be discussing the cervicothoracic sign. If a thoracic lesion is in anatomical contact with the soft tissues of the neck, its contiguous border will be lost. This is a PA chest radiograph of a patient who has a goiter. The interface of the mass lesion and the lung is very sharp below and at the clavicle, just here. But as the lesion goes above the clavicle, it fades and is uh, very difficult to see. This is the hallmark of an anterior mediastinal mass lesion. This is pushing the trachea to the right hand side. This demonstrates the well-defined anterior mediastinal mass lesion below the clavicle and the fading as it goes above the clavicle. On the right hand side you can see that a middle or posterior mediastinal mass is well defined both above and below the clavicle. This is another case of a retrosternal goiter. Once again you can see the sharp border that the goiter makes with the lung adjacent to it. The goiter actually fades before, at and above the clavicle. Note also the deviation of the trachea to the left hand side by the goiter. This is the same patient as in the previous slide. Again you can see the sharpness uh, just below the clavicle and that's because this border interfaces with the lung at that point but above the clavicle there's no anterior lung with which the mass can make an interface and hence that's why you get fading of the lesion above the clavicle. This is a patient who has achalasia. You can see that the mass lesion, in this case the dilated esophagus, is very well defined below, at and above the clavicle. Note also the presence of uh, an earth fluid level. Whenever you see a chest radiograph with achalasia, always have a look at the lung bases for evidence of aspiration pneumonia. Here is a patient who has a posterior mediastinal mass on a chest radiograph. Notice that the mass lesion is sharp below, at and above the clavicle. Notice also, because the mass lesion is quite big, it's causing deviation of the trachea to the left hand side. So deviation of the trachea does not necessarily have to be caused by an anterior mediastinal mass. In this case, it was due to a schwannoma. This final slide gives an overview of the different types of mediastinal mass seen in the superior mediastinum. Just to recap, the mass lesion that is sharp and then fades at and above the clavicle is due to a goiter or an anterior mediastinal mass. A middle mediastinal mass or a posterior mediastinal mass has a sharp border above, below and at the level of the clavicle. This is a case of achalasia. And the third case is a patient who's got a well-defined mass above, below and at the clavicle and this is due to a schwannoma.